Welcome to The Melting Pot, Jacksonville Historical Society's video series on immigration in Jacksonville. Hi, hello. Thank you very much for inviting me. My name is Ruth, and I teach uh, First Coast High School. I'm a Spanish teacher. I teach levels two, three this year, and AP. Okay, Ruth, tell us about Ecuador and some of your fondest memories there. Um, Ecuador is a beautiful, beautiful little country. It's in South America. Um, below Colombia is above uh, Peru, and it's, it's called Ecuador because it, Ecuador because it passed through the Equator line, and so we are very very blessed. We have many types of weather, and, and it's a small country, so in one day you could cross it from from the coast, from the beaches to the Amazon. Because she touches the Amazon too. Oh, how, many, so it's how many hours is that? I'll say I have crossed it in about 18 hours. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, from so. coast to highlands to, to the Amazon. And the highlands are just beautiful because um, you have the Andes Mountains crossing through. And these are altitudes uh, above sea level, maybe. We have a volcano, it's Chimborazo Volcano, that has about 6,000. Um, meters high up above sea level, so it's very, very high. Yeah, one of the highest in the world. And, and very cold, too. <laughs> and the beaches? We do. We, I grew up in the beaches. I grew up in the coast. I am from Puerto Viejo, little town in the coast of Ecuador. Um, the city that feed the international airport will be Guayaquil, which is south of Puerto Viejo. And it's just so beautiful. That's one thing that I remember the most is growing up in a beautiful place, which have very close the beaches. Uh, Crucita was my favorite. Um, San Mateo, a big port called Manta is there too, with the nice beaches as well. Um, I grew up at the beach. I remember going to the beaches almost every weekend after church, because it's not too far. It's like about 25 minutes now in car. Used to be more, you know? Roads have got better. And, and you can go in 20, 25 minutes to the, to the near beach from my home town, which is Puerto Viejo. Is that a hilly town or is it flat? We do. It, Puerto Viejo is, is a valley. So we have um, mountain, small little hills, mountains, I would call cerros, we call them a little bit higher than just a hill. Um, and it's just so pretty. It, you never found a straight line. Uh, everything is curvy line because the infrastructure has to be built among uh, mountains and hills to get to one point. It's called El Valle de Puerto Viejo because of it, because it has valleys. So how does that translate to? Valleys. Um, oh, valleys. Valleys. Okay. Puerto Viejo is a valley. It's a beautiful. And um, we, the water that we drink, it comes from another valley, not too near, not too far from nearby, maybe 35 minutes from. And I had the pleasure to go and see how it's, how is this thing working? It's magnificent. It, the whole valley of where the water it recedes to feed the com the towns, is is another valley, another valley covered with water. So we had the chance to go into in a boat and go through this. Um, place and explore. That's something that I did like last time I went. We explore a lot and get to see things that we have never seen. And it's nearby. So you went to the beaches we every did. weekend? Oh, yes, we did. Daddy will take us to the beach and right after we take us to the river. And we will just beg for it. Uh, he, he likes that, but he knew that he has to take us. It was like from going from salt to sweet water to rinse ourselves out and wash his car, <laughs> wash his, wash his, uh, his little truck he has. Who, who else would I go yeah. with? Yeah. My daddy, my brothers, we, we, were, we are a family of five, with wow. mom and daddy seven. So I was the youngest one, and once we, um, I remember one experience going into the ocean was that I would be the last one. They, they would scream to get out of the water. <laughs> so my daddy would start running the car and start taking off, and, uh, and he'd say, okay, we're leaving you, we're leaving you. And they would be, Ruchi. They called me Ruchi when I was little. And I would be like, okay, one more cuche. Cuche is like you get in and get come out. And I would be just, uh, uh, I, that's why I love Jacksonville too, because we had beaches in Jacksonville. Oh, we have such a pretty beach. Uh, um, Jacksonville, 
bit. Uh, we have in this area of the north side, we have um, Huguenot. Have you visited Huguenot? I have never been to Huguenot. Oh, so pretty. You can uh, you drive your car into the... Well, into do, you, do you have a four-wheel drive? Is no, that? well, no, you can drive your van in it. I drive my van, my children, we drive everything. We used to have to take the, all this stuff only right there down the, the, ta the chairs, tables, if we're doing a party or something. It's just so pretty. And it reminds me a lot of Puerto Viejo, Crucita. The people is very nice too. The people are very warm. The food that we have in Ecuador is a little bit different than here, but it's very good here too. Yeah. So, you know, I want to talk about holidays a little bit. We have Easter coming up. Um, can, are there any different holidays in Ecuador, or is everything? We do celebrate Easter. It's, uh, it's called Semana Santa. And during that week, uh, people get together, get together, visit uh, churches, um, cemeteries. And it, it looks a lot more like, uh, I don't know if you have heard, uh, Dia de los Muertos, which is celebrated in... Um, Day of the Dead. Uh -huh, Day of the Dead in November, first and second. So in the Semana Santa, we celebrate Jesus. It's a country that is Catholic, mostly. And I grew up being... Um, Pentecostal Christian, so uh, it was very important for us to go to church and stay in the family, have a big meal after the church is over. Um, we will not eat steak or things like that. We will refrain from it during those days, I think, and we will eat fish at grandma's house and things that did not in, um, include uh, blood, I guess, because of Jesus' blood. It was something religious. What other holidays I remember celebrating Christmas, it was very important, very different than here, because we do celebrate Christmas as Jesus' birthday, and we don't emphasize the 25th much as the 24th. Uh, and here I have uh, celebrated differently, like keeping the calm during the 24th, and celebrate on the 25th by opening the presents as, as a memory that that happened one day. But um, it, it, there is much more fun <laughs> because on the 24th, uh, in here, since we're quiet, I'm missing everybody. They are having down there, they're having a big meal. They do open the presents on the 24th. So that's one thing my kids love to go there because they don't have to wait until the 24th. <laughs> and we also wait for dinner. That's something that my husband don't like. He has to wait until the 12th comes, 12 o'clock midnight to have something to eat. So I kind of have to sneak some food sometimes for him. <laughs> because he say, I can't believe you eat so late. It's, um, it's a New Year's, it's a Christmas Eve. So we, the eve of it, and the Christmas comes at 12 afternoon, so after, after the midnight. And that's why we eat so late. We do it too on the 31st. It's a different tradition than America. We, we wait till 12 to eat. After you eat grapes or lentils or something that you eat very quickly on when the 12 hit the clock, um, then we have dinner. Then we sit down to eat our dinner, which could be a big chicken uh, in the oven, from the oven or um, many. This year, I think my mother did turkey, and last year too. Turkey is not very common in all the homes, but um, they start making it in different ways. And do, they do eat any other type of meat and salads and can miss the rice. We eat a lot of rice. If we can eat rice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that's in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Three times eggs, a day. Eggs and Oh, we eat a lot of eggs. Eggs we, and rice. We eat <laughs> eggs and rice. I met somebody this week here in Jacksonville. Her father is, oh, I am her teacher for Spanish. She's an adult student in the evenings here at First Coast. She's, her father is Ecuadorian. And she said, you're right, you do eat eggs. My daddy is happy just with rice and egg. <laughs> and I say, because we Ecuadorians do like eat rice and egg. It's a very poor dish, and we believe it has a lot of protein in it. <laughs> so your husband was surprised by that, but how did you meet your husband? I met Bruce in Ecuador. When I don't, I have a, an album somewhere. I think it's here. Pictures when we met, we were doing a mission trip. We were there in the very south of Ecuador, close to Peru, 
and this was 1997. And so since 1997, the year after we got married, that year we got married, the year after I came to America, and it's been 20 years of beautiful times. Um, this was Zamora, it was a small town in, in the south of Ecuador where we met. And so it was very nice uh, when I met him in 1997, finally. And I had graduated, I was graduating, I was graduating that year from college. So I was praying for a, finally a husband, somebody to date, uh, I was ready, I was praying for um, ha forming a home. I wasn't planning to play around. So I was just finishing college and when he showed up and he gave the proposal, of course, I think, and then let's yes. try it. And it worked out very good. For 20 years? For yeah. 20. So where did you go to college? In Ecuador. I, I, yeah, my degree is from Ecuador, it's on education. I pursued two careers, one for English and one for uh, music. And the one that gave me the certification was the music. I finished music first, so then I, I left the country. And, and in America, what you have to do if the, your certificate is education, I learned that you just have to certify here into whatever um, ramifications you can have in education. And okay. since I knew Spanish, I started pursuing the Spanish certification. You, here in Florida, you're required to have uh, the knowledge first, and then, of course, I passed that one so easy. And then um, it, uh, you have to pass later the general knowledge of English, so that it will include math, English, composition, writing, and all that. That took a little bit of challenges because I, I just started here, but um, it worked out pretty good after. Then I did my citizenship. I'm very proud of being an American citizen in 2004. I did it because of my children, you know. I want them to know that the mama loves the country that she's now part of. I want them to be proud, and I want to be proud of myself. I think you, you can be a teacher. Um, that's not a, you cannot be a teacher if you're not a citizen. You can be a, a, a you you can have a a, a visitor, be, not a visitor, a work visa, and work as a, as a contractor from another country. But if you are here and you're living and you're forming a family, I thought that the best thing to be was a citizen. I love America, so <laughs> no problem with that. Okay, let me go back back to the education. Uh -huh. um, how is it different since you're in, since you're a teacher here? Uh -huh. How is that, how is it in Ecuador, like say elementary school, um, at high school, is there high school? How yes. does that work and how is that different uh -huh. from America? Um, it's very similar because we go through kindergarten first and then um, we do have preschoolers, pre but it's not count as a, here a BPK that is required for the early age of four years old, BPK. Now, um, when you reach 12, I was 12, when I reach middle, m middle school, mm -hmm. 12, then you do six years. Um, and it used, to be, it used to be different. They have reformed schools a little bit. Uh, I would say it's totally different because public school there, for example, wears uniforms. We, we still do it, and which it helps a lot to the parents and the expenses. I grew up with a uniform, and we were proud of it to belong to. I, w I belonged to the first school that was created in my in my city of young ladies. So we were all young ladies. It wasn't. It was public. It wasn't a religious uh, school. And now, when I go back and I see that there is still public, they still wear uniform, but now they have boys. Oh, it's co-ed. It's cool. <laughs> in my days, it wasn't cool. I think I would have been a very bad girl if I, because uh, I used to love my friend, my 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 boyfriends, uh, when I was a child. We just hang out so much, and now it's it's um, boys and girl cool. Which in most of the I notice now, the most of the high schools there are cool. So they have reformed a lot. They have they still keep the uniform. The, the the way that they grade is a little bit more challenging. Um, a student in here can pass with a D, and yeah. in there the C will make you pass. The D will make you fail. 
and they do retain you when you fail. And we don't retain no more it's, it's, it's children in, in, a le in a class. In retain a school. is holding um, back? Holding back in, in a high school level, you, yes. Oh. And what else they do in there? You graduate by, by the same age, 17. And another thing that is different is that, well, we are in a school, probably at one point in the year, they're in vacations. So they get out, we get out in Ecuador around December we used to get out vacations with December and we were done. This day is a little bit longer, it takes like they go back in January and finish on January. But in February they're out, February, March and April. So their vacation is opposite than here because the weather is different. During those days, they're so hot those days that they keep the kids out of the school and it rains a lot too. So um, it is, it, that would be our winter's day. Our winter's is raining heat. Our winters here are cold, but we go to school with cold. Uh, we take vacations when it's hot here, which is June, July, July. and August. And that allows the people that I know from the highlands of Ecuador to meet with me here for vacation, probably, because they are in vacation, the highland kids. But I grew up in the coast, and the coast they are in vacation during February, March, and April, which allow my nieces and nephews to come and during those months and visit me sometimes. But I will be working. My kids will be in school. And that creates a little bit of a difficulty if we want to take a trip or something. Mm -hmm. It kind of go against us. Yeah, and when I go and visit in the summer, which I love, I'm off in the summer. My children are loving it too. But we get there, and they are in the school. So that's the only bad part about um, going in the summer from in our summer. In Christmas, we can all get together there in vacation, but uh, it's less days, we can stay only a, a few weeks. But during the months of our vacation when we go, at the beginning it was easy when they were small, I would pay um, to, for, the, for, the, for them to enter a BBK or a pre-scholar or what you call it. Um, in private schools, I would pay for the tuition for them to be that month in in the um, kindergarten in the Spanish school. Mm -hmm. But as they grow older, um, it got harder. Last year or two years ago when I sent them, I thought they would be able to enter high school and be there for a month while I was in Spain doing my master, and it was impossible. They didn't allow them. The, the system had changed the possibility of any foreign person Mm -hmm. um, to go into a, into a public system school, or any private, perhaps. It, they just could not go. So the year after, um, they became Ecuadorian citizens. Oh, yes. so they're dual? Now they're dual citizens, uh, and I am very proud of that, because now they can go. If they go next year, they could, for a month, enter co high school there and learn some, you know, learn the language, get involved uh, with the language. They can just learn the language. They can, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and they're doing it here. When family comes, they, are, they go to the stores and they translate for them as they can. Um, I, I believe that a kid learn also through immersion. So yeah. every summer I will take the opportunity to take them there with me and for them to get immersed. Yeah, it's very important to me. Okay. And to my husband, I'm sure. Okay. Um, let's talk about we'll talk about your kids a little bit more. Yeah. Well, I we have two kids. Here's a picture of Roger. This is Sam, and he's now 17, and he's graduating from here from First Coast High School. This is Anne. She's 15, and she just turned 15. So we went to Ecuador last summer to celebrate her quinceañera. Quinceañera is a big deal for us. It's a big party. We celebrate it because she become um, a young lady in her age of um, where she can accomplish a lot of things, maturity, and she can choose a college, start choosing a college. And so, yes, Samuel is graduating from First Coast High School. He's 17. He's working also at Arby's. So we're very proud of her children, yes. two kids. This picture is kind of old. It's when we, um, I think we set up this one, and it's our card for missionary, because that's what one thing Bruce does. He's a missionary for Aguana. Aguana is a ministry that 
it's like a club for children in churches where they uh, learn uh, the word of God through games and through his, his, his story time, story tell. So that's my family. This is my father, I wanna show you. He passed away in 2017, but my mother is still alive. Her name is Carmen. My daddy was named Jorge. Uh -huh. And these are my two kids. When one of the when summers we went. <laughs> and yes. they're there with your grandkids. With my parents, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, tell us about, you want to sort of, tell us about a week in your life. A week in my life? Yeah. All um, right. Okay, you come to work. I do. I come to work and uh, I bring my daughter, her my my neighbor's daughter, in one side, and the other neighbor's daughter, which is like they're both good friends with my. They grow up together. Um, probably I will give them a ride back home, but then I have to come back to school if it's today to teach adults here at school at night. And if it's Wednesday, I will run later to take her to the young lady, a young girl to take her to um, tumbling. She's doing tumbling, and she oh. she's a cheerleader here at school, so she's very busy. Uh, she's a member of a NHS, so tomorrow, no NHS, Hispanic Honor Society. So tomorrow we will meet here in my classroom with about 40 kids, 41 kids. Oh, and wow, that's busy. Mm -hmm, Yes, on a Thursday night, probably, I will go home and rest, but I am on a project right now of helping somebody in their home and painting. And it's almost like I'm never home, <laughs> but I am happy helping out somebody. Um, on a Sunday, I come back here to church. I'm gonna skip Friday, because Friday I probably go home and just relax. <laughs> relax. It's Friday. I know, but on a Sunday, we meet here at church. Um, there is a church, beautiful church called, called Ball City, and meet here at, in our auditorium from our school. It's beautiful, it, it, a lot of people attend, the music is for very, very spiritual, and the preachers are young and enthusiastic, and we just love it. We have joined the church for about two years almost. We have been coming, yes. Uh, another thing that you might see me doing is attending on a Wednesday night, um, after I drop my daughter, um, a meeting that is very important to me. Uh, I get involved in the Jacksonville Sister City, and I, uh -huh, and I am the head. Well, you call it head. I think you call it VP, vice president, of um, because we have a president of all the sister cities, and Brenda Fra um, is our president right now. And I will be there, working in representation of Curitiba. I love Brazil. I don't know if you see the flags in my room, but. Brazil is in my heart as well, and they don't speak Spanish, but I have a lot of friends that are Brazilian, which I meet them sometimes on a Saturday for a breakfast, and, and I really miss them in my life if I don't see them. They're very nice people. So because of that engagement and that love for Portuguese that I have, I have learned, I got to be the VP of Curitiba. Curitiba is a Jacksonville sister city that we have. Right. And um, where you, the purpose is to make the connection, to build relationship, and exchange um, um, any type of um, educational. Is, the, the purpose cultural. is cultural, educational, uh, business-wise too. I mean, well, I'm going to receive somebody that is coming soon, and uh, from Curitiba. From Curitiba, and he's a doctor, and he probably will stay with us, or I don't know where he's going to have to stay in order to go to the school here in the hospitals, but the three, the, the inter, the, what interested me so much is that that I can build relationships with people from anywhere in the world that comes to Jacksonville, and I want them to feel comfortable and welcome to Jacksonville. Yeah. The same way I feel, I guess. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's very nice. Have you been to Curitiba? I have never been to Curitiba, and that's another purpose, since I love traveling so much. It's in my uh, to-do list, my bucket list, what they call. I had seen some literature and, well, on Curitiba, how beautiful. Mm, and very pretty. Yeah. Interesting and old, city. Yeah. It has, it has a colonial air. It, it almost have everything that I heard, and they have been proclaimed to be a green city. And I have a lot of interest to know more um, about how is that um, the, the transportation um, is so good. 
um, in the city, they instead of using um, other gases that might convulse the city, they use uh, very. I think they they don't use a train, and they don't. Use, I don't know. I want to know what is what is that is promoting their city in the transportation because that's one thing I don't like in Jacksonville. How much freeway. Uh, it's a lot of freeway. So to get to one point to another one. We're going to need something else if the city grows more. I mean, I imagine they're not doing it because of the amount of people, but the amount of areas that are developing are, are a lot. And yeah. so in order to keep the communication lines, I think transportation is something very important to to take care of in the near future. I mean, if they haven't done it, they know why, maybe the amount of people. But Jacksonville is growing so much, and from people from all over, um, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I melting pot. You told me, welcome to the mel well, melting pot. It is a melting That's pot. That's what it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. it is. Okay, so what are your five favorite things to do here? Here in Jacksonville, hiding from the cold when it has been so cold. <laughs> yeah. But uh, fun things that are hard for me is to grab my bikes with my kids, put it in a truck and go to anywhere where I can ride them that is safe. For example, Jacksonville Beach, um, Fernandina, not too far from here. Fernandina is close. Uh, San Agustin, all right? And so you go and ride it. You plan a whole day out, and you eat nearby the beach, and you explore places you have never been. And I like that. That's an activity that is in my bucket, in my list every time somebody comes. So we have about five bikes or six bikes now in my garage. Beach bikes or mountain bikes? Um, two are mountain bikes. I don't care as long as it has wheels <laughs> and go. <laughs> Sometimes I go to your cell and get one extra because I know somebody's coming. Then I give it away later. Um, it's just that. It seems like it's easy to, to, to get a bike around here. Or they can bring their own. Sometimes I invite people who have their own bikes and we right. go. And there are a lot of bike trails. Yeah, we do. And um, uh, Fernan no Fernandina. Yeah, uh, Amelia Island. It's so beautiful to ride on bikes. Too. If you've ever been there, yeah, yeah you will like it. Um, Neptune, ba Neptune Beach. Um, I have never been in um, Pontevedra in bike. That might be my next one. Because it's so close. I mean, you think you drive about 40 minutes and you're right there and already. Then, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Another activity that we do is going and visit uh, the, all the water. Um, for example, there is one in Georgia, not too far from here. And we have one in ja here in Jacksonville. Water park? Water parks, because they love that. Uh -huh. and so those are activities for summer. During the winter, I like to visit, for example, um, what is this one that um, they have here in, uh, in October, the fair? We have the fair. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. fun. It is fun. And then we have also behind my house, there is a park that now is open for the public. And we have a lake back there, and you can go and relax and have a picnic with the family. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. I have never been. Mm -hmm. What about sports, other than bike riding, I mean, attending sports? Uh, attending, yes. Oh, this school is the opportunity if you ever bring visitors and you want to see a football, because football games, American football, is very attractive to them. They don't understand, we don't understand much about it, but the, the, the fever and the screaming that we like. Because if you can attend a soccer game for the Armada, then it's good during the season go I encourage you but if if it's the football American season that's a place you want to bring your visitors so I, I enjoy it myself in fact I have pictures of my football players up there because I want them to know that I love them so I come to their games uh, basketball we have last night here a basketball game after I taught Spanish for two hours I went to the game because my daughter was cheering. But what a game, that. It was basketball for um, varsity, I believe. So it was a good game. Yeah, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy sports. I'm not that good, but I can play. I can say I can play tennis, ping pong. Um, what else? I don't know basketball, but I like to see, you know? Yeah, to see basketball the, is beautiful. 
to watch them um, in soccer. My young girls play soccer, and so I gotta, I gotta be there for my students to play soccer. Definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, soccer is big in Peru. Oh, in Ecuador, it's big. In Ecuador. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's large. The, the people there eat soccer. Uh, I don't know. These people cry for soccer, but I'm not that. Um, I like it. I like to see it, and I like to enjoy. It. And the fever that gives you put the shirt on. I don't know how many soccer balls are balls are in my garage, but we have so many. Yeah, my daughter <laughs> signed up now for the Armada to play f for the youth Armada. We have oh. we have a little league, and the teacher um, and the coach that I have met already through texting is ready to start the practices. So there's where you will see me in the next coming month, taking our daughter to the practices. And